Hi guys, welcome to Life Sciences Grade 10. My name is Dutuzi Legopega. The My email address is dkopega2204 at gmail.com. I provide this in case anyone here might have a question or might need my help regarding life sciences. So literally anything at all, whatever topic you might be struggling with or you, are, you need to do in school, you are always welcome to send me an email and I will assist you. And then today we are continuing with the class activity we started yesterday. Remember that we need to continue with that one. So it's still based on cells, the basic units of life. If we finish quickly, then I'll, well, we'll go do the Kahoot that I have prepared. But if not, then we'll just keep on moving. We did these yesterday, so I'll move quickly past the ones we covered yesterday. And then I think we ended off yeah, yes, this is the last slide. Remember, I was explaining to you which ones are the products and which ones are the reactants. So based on what I taught you and based on the equation here, this is the, the equation for cellular restoration. Can you tell me which ones are the reactants and which ones are the products? I want to see if you understood what I explained. So please someone or all of you, if you can identify the products and identify the reactants. You've seen this equation before, right? I'm under that assumption that you've seen it before. And maybe in other classes, as in other subjects as well. So which ones there are reactants, which ones are products? This is valuable information to know and understand. because you'll be coming across questions like this more often in life sciences and other subjects like chemistry, but. Based on this equation, guys, cellular respiration equation, which ones are products, which ones are reactants? I never understand when you don't respond, yes? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I'll give you a, a few a minute or less. Okay. One and two. Okay. Okay, one and two are products. All right, thank you, Tando. And three, actually, these ones are the products. One, two, four. One, two, four are the products. As you can see with the equation here, you have carbon dioxide, you have H2O, and you have ATP. All of those three are the products. How do you identify the products? The arrow here is showing you that this is an input and then the output would be these three. And I even showed you how to balance out the equation when it happens, but you may not need to balance the equation, especially for life sciences, but it is important that you understand how this is set up. Why when we say you need food and oxygen for energy, we mean this. When you take in the, the glucose which you get from your food, plus the oxygen which you inhale, they will break, they will combine together and give you what, uh, what you exhale, which is carbon dioxide. You see oxygen and carbon dioxide in gaseous exchange. We inhale oxygen, we exhale carbon dioxide. So you see it again here. And then what else is, is excreted? H2O, you get water from the food that you eat, as well as energy. So there, water, you see it through, especially you see water when you urinate after eating, you know, the foods are processed and digested. There'll be solids and then there'll be liquids, which is that H2. And then you also get energy in the form of ATP. So whenever you see ATP, just know that that is energy because ATP is an energy carrying molecule. Thank you, Noltando. And then now, here we are giving the correct biological term for each of the following. Write only the term next to the relevant question number. 
So only give me the term, write only the term next to the relevant question number. There, yeah, please participate, guys. Oh, how I do, how did I do that? Part of the cell that consists of about 90% water. The part of the cell that consists of about 90%. Ah, I did this for all of them. Okay. Part of the cell that consists of about 90% water is called the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is that part of the cell that consists of about 90% water. And then, ugh, I don't know how I made that mistake. Now you're going to see answers everywhere. <laughs> and then this is often referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. What is that? It is the mitochondrion. Remember mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell, why? That's where energy uh, storage occurs. Let's go to it, mitochondrion. This is the site of cellular respiration where energy is released from glucose molecules. So this equation that I just showed you of cellular respiration, it takes place in the mitochondrion where the glucose molecules and oxygen, uh, they, they, they are used to produce what? Water, carbon dioxide, and energy. So that's why uh, the mitochondrion is called the powerhouse. So whenever you speak of energy, the organelle involved in that process is the mitochondrion. Pigment found in green plants is what? It is the chlorophyll. Can someone tell me the pigment found in, uh, the pigment that gives the, um, the roots its white, white color, and then the pigment that gives the flowers or even the leaves in autumn, they are reddish color. What is that pigment? Okay, that will be a homework. I'll make sure it's in the test next week. Know the pigment responsible for pigment found in roots and the pigment found in the flowers or even in the red leaves during autumn. Okay, this one I did it correctly. The part of a plant cell that is composed of cellulose. What is that part of a plant cell that is composed of cellulose? We discussed this in the beginning. We even did the cahoots on it. It consists of cellulose. What part of the plant is that? Okay, cell wall. <laughs> the cell wall, you find it. Cellulose is found in the cell wall. And then the fluid inside the vacuole. What fluid is found in the vacuole? You find the cell sap. And then the structure that distributes substances made in the cell. What is that structure that distributes substances made in the cell? Remember last week when we learned about, I discussed it at, right after we discussed Golgi bodies. What is that structure? If you're not gonna give me an answer, then it's fine. I will give you all the answers. Here, number F that I skipped is the movement of a substance against a concentration gradient. That is active transport. It moves against a concentration gradient. If it moves down a concentration gradient, then it's either diffusion or, uh, yeah, movement of substances. I almost made a mistake. If it's movement of substances, so it can be diffusion or facilitated diffusion, right? If it was moving down a concentration gradient, if it was moving down a concentration gradient, it would be diffusion or assisted diffusion, assisted, uh, facilitated diffusion. 
But if it's movement of substances against a concentration gradient, then it is active transport. And then osmosis is the movement of water down a concentration gradient, and that is osmosis. Then the structure that distributes substances made in the cell. What is that structure? I'm waiting for an answer there. Structure that distributes substances made in the cell. Think of vehicle. It has a name similar to that. I'm giving you a hint. Let's do it like this. Did you guys ever play hangman? Do you know hangman? Do you know? <laughs> okay. I'll make it like hangman then. I got an answer that it distributes substances made in the cell. Someone gave me an answer, but let me give you a hint. Let's go here. Let's go to those the, that we described before. We're going to play hangman right now. I don't know if I still remember hangman actually, <laughs> but yeah, I'll try. It should be this side. You see, it's on this slide here. I said I give you a hint, it's like, it's a vehicle. But if you wanna play hangman then, let's go for hangman. Okay, there, there are the letters. So what letter are you guessing first? What alphabet do you want to guess? H. <laughs> no, H is not there. Go to Hangman. How does it work? I draw a head ne? first. H is not there. A is not there. So you have a neck now. Gosh, you guys, no, N is not there. I'm sorry, let me. <laughs> okay, the trick with hangmen that I always used is you start with the vowels. If you start with the vowels, it gets easier from there. So E, Anesu just said E. Imagine, it's one against how many people in class. There's someone who said you, wait. Okay, wait, I'm confused myself. Let me track there with them. A, there was an A, N, N is the one that gave you this arm, right? And U is giving you this arm. A, N, U is giving you this arm. E, there is E there. Even there, there is E. Okay, O is giving you, what is this? <laughs> the chest area, it, it's giving you O. That's for O. Remember the hint I gave you, start with vowels. That's how I used to do it. You start with vowels, it makes your life easier. At least there are only five vowels. There is the I, so it's nothing there. K, I is there. Ha, Anesu saved everyone and Zainab. Okay, guys, <laughs> yes. That is correct. It is the Versicle. Gosh, I missed playing Hangman. I need to play it. Ah, I said Gogi Body here. No, I did it wrong. It distributes. What distributes is the Versicle. Versicle does the distribution. I made the mistake here. The Versicle. It's the one that transports, right? It transports the substances in the cell. So it is the vesicle. 
Okay, and then next, choose the correct, thank you so much for that. You reminded me of, of a very, very long time, a very, very uh, past stage in my life. I need to go back and play hangman after this. Choose the correct option for each of the following questions. Again, okay? now it's multiple choice. Easy enough for you guys, ne? What structure contains DNA and regulates most of the processes within the cell? This one contains DNA. Okay, I'm getting two answers. Someone is saying three and someone is saying four. Hey guys, I just remembered also, who do I owe? BMAX, it's BMAX that I own. Eh? BMAX, eh, send me your, um, what network do you use? And then I'll send you your, your airtime. I'll buy it and send it. Give it to me now and then I'll send it later today. What structure contains DNA and regulates most of the processes within the cell? Three and four, who wants to break that? Who wants to break this? Who wants to give us to break the tie? Either three or four. That's the correct answer. Okay, Zainab is breaking it. It is the nucleus. That is correct. The nucleus is that structure that contains DNA. Whenever I speak of DNA, guys, nucleus is responsible for that and it also regulates most of the processes within the cell. Please remember that. And then B, what is a cell membrane? Based on the options here, is it the thin flexible barrier around the cell that regulates transport or is it rigid cover that, pro that provides support for the cell? Is it the place where light energy, water and carbon dioxide are used or is it a special organelle that converts solar energy to chemical energy? Okay. Because I have different, okay, well, a lot of you two are going for one and the other one went for two. So let's eliminate cell membrane. There is no way it can be two. It is not rigid. It is not there to provide support for the cell. Uh, so it leaves out with one, that's one. It's the thin flexible barrier around the cell that regulates transport. Remember, it regulates and, and, and regulates what items, what molecules or particles move inside the cell and what particles move outside of the cell. Remember that? So, yep, that is the cell membrane. Guys, we even discussed the cell membrane. We spent a long time discussing the cell membrane. I even showed you the structure. What is the structure of the cell membrane? Actually, before I even continue, Give me the name. What is the structure of the cell membrane? Another, uh, I think I use that as an excuse for playing a, another hangman. Structure of a cell membrane. Yo, it's such a long word. I'm missing one letter here. The structure of a membrane. By looking at all these guys, you should already get an idea how many, 
how long that word is. We didn't do many long words over here. So let's start, hangman. Is that an I? Okay, let me Santuri Pile. Oh, guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I write it, I spell it correctly. Okay, there's the I. Okay, I is there. No, that will be giving the answer away. I'm not going to give you any letter. You guys must guess the letters. Okay, <laughs> Tando, no, Tando. I won't make it easier for you. We did this in class together, first of all. Okay, there is A, Zainab and Santuri said A. Guys, you still don't have an idea. How many long words did we discuss? It's actually two words here. Oh, you see my hint helped, ne? I gave you a hint of starting with uh, vowels and it's working for you. E. <laughs> okay, there is E. Now you are, okay, yeah, you are on the right track. Does anyone know the name yet? It's two words. Someone guess another alphabet already. <laughs> Why are you not moving? You, there is no you, so you get a head for the you. There is a head there. S, okay, S is there. There's only one S. Only one S. So you've got your S there. Another letter. L. Okay, I swear, uh, Santuri and Zainab know now. L, there is your L. And then P, this will give away the whole answer. Yes, it's phospholipid by layer. Guys, please remember you won't be so lucky in your in your test. There's no uh, hangman in your test here. So you will need to remember these without any help. But I'm hoping that through these games, you'll be able to remember that, no man, we played a game and then I remember. It can even help you with the spelling, you see? So please, please, please remember this work. Study it, ne? Okay, next up, we have the next question is, which two organelles contain their own DNA genome separate from the nuclear genome? Which ones here contain their own genome separate from the nuclear genome? Okay, I see you are not going to answer me there. <laughs> So it's the ribosomes and the vacuoles, guys. Remember the ribosomes have their, 
they have the, they make the RNA there. Remember, it has a different uh, their own DNA genome it has its own there in the ribosomes and vacuoles. Okay, this one you are supposed to list the differences yourselves, but let me hide it. Tell me the differences between a uh, you carry animal cells and plant cells. What differences are there in animal cells and plant cells? Any difference that you any difference that you remember? I'm waiting for your answers. Guys, differences between animal cells. Okay, Santuri is telling me animal cells have an irregular shape and plant cells have a regular shape. That is correct. And do you know what, why, why, what exactly causes the regular shape in plants that you can't find in animal cells? What structure causes that? It is this one that we covered here together with that one, the part of the cell that is composed of cellulose, the cell wall. It is because of the cell wall. The cell wall provides the, the, the plant cell with that rigid structure so that it has a regular shape. And animal cells do not have a cell wall. So that's another difference that I'm giving you. Yeah? Thank you, Santuri. So another difference is uh, animal cells do not contain plastids. Remember when I asked you what is responsible for the different pigmentation in plants? And plant cells, all, the, almost all plant cells contain plastids, such as what? When we speak of chloroplast, chloroplast is a type of plastid. Chloroplast is responsible for the green pigmentation in plants or in leaves. And then chromoplasts are responsible for the red, the, the, the variety of colors in flowers, as well as in leaves during autumn, as well as what else? Uh, fruit, you know, those different shades, the different shades of colors, the different pigmentations. Chromoplasts are responsible for that. And then we've got leucoplasts, which are responsible for the white pigmentation in roots. So that's the difference. You do not find plastids in animal cells, you find plastids in plant cells. And then another difference that uh, Santuri uh, explained in a way is that there is the, the animal cell has an irregular shape, and that is due to the fact that animal cells do not have cell walls. But plant cells have a rigid cellulose cell wall in addition to the cell membrane, which gives it the regular shape. Then animal cells, they contain centrioles, whereas plant cells do not contain centrioles. Animals do not have plasmodesmata or pits, as, but plant cells have contained plasmodesmata and pits. And then animal cells have few vacuoles, if any, whereas uh, plant cells have large central vacuole, which is filled with cell sap in mature cells. Animal cells, there's a nucleus, which is generally found at the center of the cytoplasm. But in plant cells, the nucleus is found near the edge of the cell. So it's the location of the nucleus that differs. And then in animal cells, there is no intracellular space found between the cells. And then with, uh, with um, plant cells, there are large intracellular airspace found between some cells. Remember when I showed you the diagrams of the cells in plant cells, they are close to each other. Let me try and draw it for you here. I showed you that it would be like a, a cell here and then they are adjacent to each other like this. I'm sorry, the drawing won't be proper, but it's just to show you how they are usually structured. There, then that space here, it's that intracellular space usually found between some cells. You see, these are different cells and there's a space, this one in white here, it's that space between cells, but in animal cells, it's, there's no intracellular space. 
That's the difference there. And then guys, question seven, name a structural adaptation of the mitochondria that makes it suited to its function. Remember mitochondria? I'll show you the diagram again. It has many cristae, which are folds, that increase the surface area for reactions. I emphasized this when we did it. Remember the importance of surface area on the structures? When, when, when organelles or any structure in an animal or organism has a large surface area, it allows it to function better and perform better. So when it increases the surface area for reactions, then it, it, they happen much effect, efficiently and effectively so. It's the many folds of crystal. Let's go to the mitochondria and look at these folds that we speak of. There, mitochondria is number nine. These folds here, they allow for the large surface area because there are many of them. There could have been maybe about three, which would be lower surface area. But because there are so many crystal folds, then they allow for a lot of surface area to ensure reactions happen faster. And what reactions are those? It's those reactions that happen during cellular respiration with that formula that I showed you, those reactions. They happen on those folds of crystal. Name one structural adaptation of chloroplasts. Structural uh, adaptation of chloroplasts. Chloroplasts have many thylakoid discs which contain chlorophyll, thus maximizing the surface area for the absorption of light. So, so far you see the many adaptations have to do with surface area. That means these are mechanisms that assist the, the cell or the organelle to function better. So this is due to the thylakoid discs, which are found in the chloroplast. These thylakoid discs contain chlorophyll. They maximize that surface area for, maximize the surface area for the absorption of light energy. Remember, chlorophyll is where is involved in the process of photosynthesis. And you need what as an input? You need light energy as an input for photosynthesis. And then that is it from me. Any questions, guys? Any question? Tomorrow we'll do one last Kahoot for this topic. Ne? Then we're moving on with the syllabus. But remember next week we are doing uh, assessments, but you'll do them offline. But we'll do revision. It will cover term one and term two's work then you can do it offline, but please upload it so that I can assist you as well and check. We'll also do the marking together in class. So next week, because it will be on Wednesday, I think if you've seen the newsletter, it's on Wednesday the 29th. So we will do Monday and Tuesday, we'll do revision from term one and term two. And then Wednesday you'll be, as well as Wednesday, when you'll be writing the assessment, then Thursday and Friday, it will be the memorandum. So. Tomorrow, a Kahoot, and then the next two days afterwards, we will do, we're moving on with the syllabus. So any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, guys, tell uh, BMX tomorrow. He's the one, it's BMX uh, who won the competition, the Kahoot the last time, ne? They must, he must, we'll discuss tomorrow so that I can send them their prize. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll play again tomorrow. Bye.